Welcome. This is Damon Brown. You are watching Bring Your Worth TV. I'm supporting you as a side hustle, as a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Thanks for coming through. Let me make sure that you guys are all good on the Amazon platform as well. Always takes a couple of seconds for the Amazon folks to come through. It's so good to see y'all. I took a little bit of a break. Lots of stuff going on personally, professionally, all those things. But I am entrepreneurial coach. You can learn more about me at DamonBrown.net. <clears throat> Excuse me. Springtime. You know, it means allergy season. <laughs> Entrepreneurial coach, David Brown. You can learn more about me at DavidBrown.net if you want to coach with me, learn more about my books, my products and services and all those good things. And Bring Your Worth TV coming to you Wednesdays at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. I've been playing so much with the scheduling and the timing. And some of y'all that, that know me personally know that I've been trying to find that good balance between showing up for y'all regularly like around my birthday last September, I had a live show almost every single day. That was an amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And also I was like, oh my God, I'm tired. And then it's like so many other things I'm doing behind the scenes. And I want to make sure that I give you all value and strength. So that's part of the reason why I've taken a break from the channel. This is episode 371. So you got plenty of stuff to watch. <laughs> Thanks to all y'all who have supported me and all that good stuff. And we got some good stuff coming. I can't wait to tell y'all more about it. If you want to subscribe for free to Damon Brown's Bring Your Worth TV, just click the link below or just go to bringyourworth.tv. If you're watching this on YouTube or any of those platforms, you can follow me even on Amazon, believe it or not, they actually have a, a follow button. I think it's called follow. Things change so rapidly in the tech world. I don't know what it's called now, but you can continue to see me <laughs> regularly. Wednesdays are usually my live show, so I'll be doing that. And then during the summer when I'm off, we're hanging out with my kids and all that. Then I'm sure I'll have a, a couple of reruns coming through. But all these are actually available for you right now. Again, 371 episodes, lots of content out there. If you want to level up as a side hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur, my book collection, the complete Bring Your Worth collection. If you're watching on Amazon, the link is somewhere around my big head. <laughs> this is the collection. Check it out. Three big books. One of the books Actually, yeah, one of the books is actually a trilogy. So there's like five books in this piece going all the way back to um, the uh, the Bites as Entrepreneur, which y'all made a bestseller. Thank you. And that was back when my youngest son was a baby. He just turned eight. So it's been quite a journey, quite a beautiful, emotional journey. Thank you for rocking with me. If you want the complete collection, you know, if you're a completist like myself, <laughs> if you know my work, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a completist like myself, be sure and, and pick it up. You can get it uh, in the physical form. You can also get it as an audiobook, And then, of course, you can get it digital on Kindle on your favorite device. And if you want to go ahead and listen to the audiobook as a gift to y'all, actually have the entire audiobook. That joint's like nine hours or something. I don't know. It's, it's incredible. We're a whole lot of content there. All together, you can watch it literally right now after you finish hanging out with me. You can watch it <laughs> You watch it right after, after we finish hanging out. Click the link right there. My whole thing is um, is service and helping y'all get to the next level. And my belief, my structure is that by serving y'all, I'm also able to serve myself in the best way because as I create a community for y'all, which 18,000 plus of y'all have subscribed to this channel, and then of course the other platforms, then that allows me to continue to do what I do, feed my family and create a legacy for myself. So I love the in Silicon Valley, they call it a virtuous cycle that we have. This is part of that. And so please buy the book, support the book. But if you're in this position where you're like, Damon, I'm, I can't buy the book right now, or I know some folks who are literally overseas or in some place where they're not going to be able to physically get the book, you know, you can listen to it right now and get those gems and get that energy and feel free to share with other people, leave a comment, or whatever. And that in a turn also ends up supporting the show. If you want to learn more about the stuff of political platform Moxie, unlike other political platforms, no shade intended, it's actually not so much about politics and partisanism. I think that's the word. Correct me if I'm wrong. Partisanism, in other words, being partisan about it, but more about talking about how decisions made with the government, particularly here in America, as we ramp up to the presidential election uh, this November. It's already springtime. You know, the election's happening in very late fall, so it's not that far. Having those discussions that 
don't quite fit uh, with Bring Your Worth TV and also fit and affect people, again, like yourself, who are side hustlers, solopreneurs, solopreneurs get the word out of my mouth, <laughs> and other non-traditional entrepreneurs. Be sure and check it out. You can join for free for 60 days. In other words, if you join now, today's what, April 17th, then you wouldn't have to pay anything until, was that June? And by, I live in Las Vegas, so it would already be in the, in the three digits here by the middle of June when you'd actually have to re-up for this. Be sure and check it out. I already have a few posts on there. I'm going to be adding more. A lot of my colleagues are on there too. Be sure and check it out, particularly if you're in America or if you're affected, frankly, by American decisions. You should go and check it out and see what's happening. My last live show, you should check it out. It happened a handful of weeks ago. Tough times, read these. And it features some of my favorite books. Of course, I think I'm in the middle of reading those books again. So they're actually not on my desk. They're not in the back. They're actually in my car, believe it or not. Because so I'll read it during carpool when I'm waiting for my kids to pick up from school or whatever, whatever. But be sure and check it out. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. You know, we just hit the six month anniversary of everything that's happening in Gaza. And it's just a rough, messy time. And so I want to make sure that I gave y'all a gift of, uh, well, for me, reading and meditating helps a lot as well as talking to people and supporting others. You, the um, the uh, live show that I had talks about different ways that we can support ourselves, that we can self-regulate rather than over-regulate. In other words, work on finding our own balance rather than trying to control other people. If you read my newsletter at joindama.me, you know what I'm talking about. I'll throw the link up in a second. And all these different things. So be sure and check out that episode. I'm very excited about, about um, how it turned out and uh, just some of the feedback that uh, that I've gotten from it as well as sharing it with y'all. If you want to join the newsletter, it is free. It's every Wednesday at 5.55 a.m. It is delivered. But delivering it, who like the postman for, man, the newsletter has been on for 15 years plus and consistently for probably about a decade. And um, some of y'all that are watching have been longtime newsletter subscribers connect with me at the keynotes or at the conferences I go to. So thank you. I appreciate you. I love y'all. Um, today in the newsletter, you can uh, click it right there. And it's the archive of the most recent newsletters. So I just moved to a new platform called Beehive. I will talk about that a little bit later on when we talk about sponsorships some more. But with that, the whole archive of newsletters is on there. I'd say the archive for Beehive goes back about three months. So I think I transferred over in late January. So be sure and check it out. If you want to learn about regulating, it's actually one about regulation, you know, and so I've been doing a deep dive in that as far as my own self-healing and discovery. Um, I'm talking about passive income and other things, even talking about emotional intelligence. Be sure and check it out and subscribe. It is free, just like the show. So be sure and see what's happening. All right. I'm excited. I've missed y'all. I'm so excited to have a live show. Today, we're going to talk about, talk about how to get sponsors, how to get sponsors. And when it comes to sponsorship, essentially sponsors enable us to create content or to um, pass on a product or a service. But particularly, I'm talking about the content folks today. It allows us to do so without being beholden to creating an advertising base. If you're on YouTube or if you're on a, another platform like TikTok, even though the bar is a lot higher, you're, you can be dependent on ads and that's the only way you can make money. And as some of y'all know, that is not consistent money. Sponsorship gives you the opportunity to actually say, okay, this amount of money is coming, coming in based on this episode, this video, this LinkedIn post, shout out to the LinkedIn folks, whatever, whatever. It allows you to have have uh, a little bit more consistency as far as what's coming in. And if you know me as a coach, if you watch any other 370 episodes before this, you know it's really about us going into no man's land, us going on this journey, us going on this amazing quest to create really good stuff and or to serve a great community, as I talked about in the joindamon.me newsletter this morning, and to do that in a way that we can actually sustain ourselves with it. And it could be a side hustle or it could be a solopreneurship. It doesn't really matter. But we would love to get to the point where that actually stabilizes a little bit so that we could become more consistent. Because often the more consistent we are with our finances, the more consistent we can be as far as showing up. Sponsorship allows us to do that. And so today I'm going to break down three big questions that often come when it comes to sponsorship. I just started getting involved in sponsorship 
I think those conversations really started about a year ago and then started to get sponsorships in the recent months. So I don't have all the game. I'm sure some of y'all that are watching, in fact, I know some of y'all are watching, actually know a lot about sponsorship. Be, be free, be, be free. <laughs> you can be free too. Feel free to jump in, add your commentary or refine some of the stuff I'm talking about. Because I know some of y'all who are super cool with the show go a lot deeper than I do. My main thing with today was I was like, Again, it's been about a year since those sponsorship discussions began. And I'm like, whoa, this is a whole different, this is a whole different world. I just had the three-year anniversary of the show about three, four, five months ago. It was in December of 2023. And that third year is when things took off. And suddenly the sponsors started coming in, the discussions started happening. And I'm like, okay, there's a whole different level. And I want to bring you guys behind the curtain to see what's happening. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to to hop in. Thank you. It's, it's good to be back live. And thank you, Joan. Much love. Awesome channel, by the way, both of them. You know, yeah, yeah. Carlos's shorts are amazing. And Joan's topics as far as maturity and intimacy are killer. So congrats to both of y'all. Y'all, you know, I, I look up to y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming through for sure. F feel free to jump in the comments. All right, so let's start with a super basic one. What exactly is a sponsor? This is actually a little bit trickier <laughs> than, than, uh, than it seems. You know, so let's break it down. A sponsor is someone who wants access to your audience. Um, they want to talk what you or they want they themselves want to talk about a particular product or service, and or they want to expose your audience to a certain product or service so that they will purchase it or become part of their community. So essentially they're saying, <clears throat> hey, whatever you're doing on TikTok, whatever you're doing on a particular platform, let's keep it broad. Whatever you're doing on a particular platform, your audience matches a segment of the audience that we wanna reach. And so because of that, we wanna go ahead and do a partnership with you. We will pay you X amount of money or revenue share or what have you based on us accessing that audience. That's where it gets a little bit more detailed. What I found is that there's two different types of sponsorship. And one is what we usually talk about with sponsorship. And the other one is a type of sponsorship called affiliate. So let's break it down super simple or as simple as possible. Again, we could have like a five hour show on this. So I'll try to keep it basic. Sponsorship in the traditional term when we mention a sponsor is an active sponsorship. This Bring Your Worth TV show is sponsored by such and such. It's not, but you hear where I'm going. That is active. And then I might show the product. I might be like, oh, this is sponsored by the complete Bring Your Worth collection, you know, published by Bring Your Worth Publishing or what have you. That is active sponsorship. I'm going to go ahead and have this product or the service or interview somebody and they're going to talk about the product service, I'm going to put it in front of my audience. This is what it is. It's active. You have to do something. Often when it comes to media, like for instance, with this show, I might have a 15 minute episode and a sponsor might say, you know what? I want you to do a 30 second block. 30 sec blocks is just a term for a video, a 30 second block talking about this new ice cream that came out that's made by entrepreneurs who are side hustlers. And that will appeal to your audience because your audience is full of side hustlers and they like ice cream. And so Damon will pay you X amount of dollars and then you go and give us a 30 second spot and you kind of go from there. Passive sponsorship, which I mentioned in, um, in most every episode is based on often affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is saying, you're gonna have a particular link to a particular product or service. When someone of your community or someone's watching your videos or reading your newsletter or whatever, clicks on the link, there'll be a little message that's sent to the company that's sponsoring you. If someone buys a product or service, then you're actually going to get a piece of the money that that main organization is getting. So if I have a bookstore and I sponsor your newsletter, and you say, hey, Damon has a great bookstore called Damon's Bookstore, check it out. And someone from your community in your newsletter clicks on it, then that's a little message that's sent over. And then if someone with, with that same person that clicked on the link goes and buys 
$20 worth of books, we might have an agreement so that I give you say 5% or whatever that final sale is. So one is very active. This is an advertisement that we're talking like old school when there were three stations, CBS, NBC, and ABC, where there's like an ad, or it's like there's someone that's coming on the air that's talking about it, sponsored content, that's active sponsorship. Then there's the other one, which is passive sponsorship, which we often call affiliate or uh, referrals. You could hear, use either term. Once you get into that space, then there's an opportunity for you to serve both parties because obviously there's an organization or um, a company that has a product or a service who wants to really serve. Ideally, you have to make sure that they really want to serve your audience that wants to serve your audience. But then your audience is actually getting exposure to these cool things that actually serve them. So when I have a link and, and most of my links here are at affiliates, there's a little disclaimer at the bottom and I often mention it during the show. So if I'm offering, say, Beehive, which is my newsletter service that I use, um, again, the links are below and I'll talk about them in a moment. If I'm using Beehive and I love them as a newsletter platform, which I do, and I say, yo, y'all should check out Beehive because I was with some of the other platforms. They didn't work that well for me. But this one, this is special because of this, that, and the third. That gives Beehive an opportunity to get access to my Bring Your Worth TV audience. And then also it gives my audience um, service or a product that will actually help them level up because that newsletter service is great. For that being a catalyst for that, being the connector, the intermediary, then I get paid from Beehive. That's where the ethical things come in, where you have to make sure that you're not just shilling something, but you're actually saying this is something that's going to serve my audience with this product or my service. Again, I talked about that at the newsletter at joindamon.me early this morning. Feel free to click on there after, after this video. But I talked about the science behind that and how if you're honest and true as far as serving your audience, it makes it a lot easier to frankly make a living because I'm not going to serve y'all dog food. Nothing against dogs, nothing against food. But I'm not going to serve y'all the proverbial dog food and be like, yeah, this product is great because they want to pay me a bag. It's like, no, actually, there's a clearinghouse to this. And not everyone's going to be sponsored. I've turned down sponsors recently where I'm like, that's not the vibe of my audience. The money sounds good, but that's that's not my audience. That's not right for them. So I had to say no. So you're leaving the money on the table, quite literally. But there's also trust that's built up over time as you work with different sponsors, you know? Oh, for sure, for sure. And again, check out Joe Jones. Uh, jones uh channel the link should be in there with her comment if you're watching on youtube now if we're gonna go a little bit deeper as far as what a sponsor is um the sponsorship is really about you again i, I can't i can't emphasize this enough i think it's worth repeating i'm realizing i'm repeating myself but it's really worth repeating it's essentially someone paying you in some form to get access to the people that you build a community with that is a um, a gentleman's agreement. Sorry for the antiquated term, but there isn't a, a new term for it. If there's a new term, please throw it in the chat. But it's a gentleman's agreement. If I'm hyping up Beehive or the other platforms I'm talking about that will help you get sponsorships, then y'all, 18,000 plus of y'all are trusting me. And then Beehive, you know, with me being an affiliate for them, which is the, you know, the noun of it, me being an affiliate for them, they're trusting me to show them in the best light and trusting me that you guys are the right audience for it. So there's a whole circle of trust here. And once that's broken, I've seen it happen. It can get really, really ugly. And so if we're going to go ahead and talk about sponsorships, then we need to talk about how we can actually connect with sponsors and learn more about them. We'll get deeper into that in the next question, but let's start with the super basic platforms. One of my favorites is partner stack. Partner Stack allows you to set up affiliate links based on different organizations who are looking for folks like yourself who have an audience. And again, to emphasize, audience could be on um, the social media platform du jour. I don't want to say any more platforms because <laughs> if you guys are watching this in the future, then you know some of these platforms literally might not exist. So the social media platform du jour, it could be of your newsletter, which is why I love newsletters. 
they always exist. They're kind of like, uh, you know, um, basic TV or, or the, the mail, <laughs> the postal office. It's always going to be around. It's like the radio. It's always going to be around. That's why I'm hyping up newsletters so much. Um, so it could be that. Um, it could be your, your show, whatever platform that is. It could be your podcast, whatever, whatever. Partner Stack allows you to connect with the different ones and learn more about them. And I will go ahead and uh, see if I can do this. Go ahead and bring in bring in another <laughs> another one here. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, look, see? Right back like I left something. All right. So this is partner stack. It's just partnerstack.com. Obviously, connect, earn, grow, you know the vibes. And so it allows you to connect with different different companies. And so there's probably about, oh man, about a hundred companies that I've seen on my dashboard. And then what I can do is, is um, go in and reach out to them really simple and be like, hey, you know, I'm, I connect side hustlers, solopreneurs, other non-traditional entrepreneurs. I help them get, get their stuff off the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and, and give you this level of support. And I have this show and I could put affiliate links in there because I think that my audience is really going to care about your particular product. And so after I talk with them, it's not even it, it's not even a long conversation, you know, just over email or equivalent of a DM within the platform, then we get connected and so forth. It's cool because there's certain bonuses that companies will have depending on how much traction you get based on how many clicks there are. And so forth. We'll talk about that towards the end when we talk more about how you price those things and, and all that other stuff. Um, yeah. And then obviously there's, there's quite a few different ones. Uh, Freshworks, I'm a fan of. Um, I've talked about them quite a bit. Vimeo, they're kind of like the competitor to YouTube. Shout out to Vimeo. And there's quite a few of these that are that are really cool. Um, and I'll make sure. Yeah. Click on this. There we go. There you go. I was trying to get a little bit more for you guys, a little bit more meat. Um, but so these are different things. And of course, they're breaking down the revenue stats. You apply to the network. And we're going to get into that with um, with the next question as far as how you get involved with them and also what you need to actually have traction to talk to different folks like that. So that's how Partner Stack works. I can go do a deeper dive. Shoot, shoot me a link or shoot me a link. Shoot me a message or a comment in the comments or go ahead and let me know if you want a full breakdown of partner stack. I just want to give you guys a general overview of what's happening. Uh, Mario Armstrong, shout out to him. You can Google him and other folks have these really big deep dives as far as getting sponsorships. Again, you can talk about it all day. I want it just to be a broad introduction to what you guys can get involved in as you build up your content and as you build up your community. I'll be remiss if I didn't shout out Caitlin, Caitlin Arford, if I can speak today, Caitlin Arford and her wonderful newsletter over at, at Freelance Opportunities. You can click the link right there. Also part of Beehive Network. Shout out to the Hive, not the, not Beyonce, but the other Hive. But shout out to her because I actually learned about a few of these things through her work. She has a fantastic newsletter. I want to say it comes out every other week, depending on what's happening. And what she does is she collects the last newsletter I saw. I could even, it was so many opportunities, like opportunities for freelance writing, freelance editing, podcasting, anything that's kind of the independent independent creators. This is the jam for that. I want to say the last one I read of hers probably had like 100 opportunities. No, no exaggeration. No cap, as the kids say. Like, for real. Like, it was an amazing amount of opportunities. Um, it is a free newsletter. I think all the editions of it are free, but feel free to click on it. I know definitely that the, the issue that I got recently was free, but check it out. She does fantastic work. Some of these opportunities I actually learned through her. So I want to make sure I gave her a shout out. Hope you're doing well, Caitlin, and fantastic work that you're doing over there supporting, you know, us that are independent. If you want to understand the power of specifically affiliate links, which again is the passive version of sponsorship, be sure and check out my recent video, Passive Income 2024. Hey, we're in 2024. And it is, I want to say like 30 minutes of just breaking down what you need to do to build passive income. 
I've talked about this since the show launched three and a half years ago. I've been talking about it with y'all when I started doing the Bites of Entrepreneur series, which became the Bring Your Worst series again eight years ago, back when my kid was born. Like, this is a conversation. The reason why passive income matters in this case is that for the biggest creators that you know, from a Mr. Beast on YouTube to some of the people that are really popular on LinkedIn, as well as on the other platforms, a big part of their income, believe it or not, not just comes from the active sponsorship as in this sponsor, this, you know, post or whatever is it's sponsored by such and such and it has hashtag sponsored. But a lot of it also comes from affiliate. Affiliate is part of this discussion because if you're like me and all your money comes independently, then a project could be running slow. I'm talking <laughs> I'm talking with someone right now where we're working on a project and it's going way slower than expected. So you could be working on a project and it could be going slower. Um, you could um, have issues with the companies that are taking care of you. Last year, I had a company that I worked for and go bankrupt. And so that money's gone or I got to figure out some type of uh, remediation, I think is the term for that. That's part of the game. And I've been, see the gray hairs. I've been in this game for a while. This is part of the game. If you're able to create sponsorships, whether it's active, having someone come in, you know, and you actually have an active quote unquote advertisement, or if you end up coming in with the passive as in the affiliate um, or the um, referral fees or what have you, then you're able to even things out. And I'd say about once a week, yeah, about once a week, I'm getting a paycheck from somebody. And it could be through uh, the affiliate, it could be through sponsorships, which I'll get into in a second, as far as active sponsorship, it could be from the royalties from the books that I've done, you know, and that's the nice thing about having your own publishing company, you know, so when y'all buy a book for the majority of it comes to me, thank you for supporting me, et cetera, et cetera. That allows things to be a lot more even and money is always coming in, whether I have active freelance or not. So be sure and check it out of all the videos. That's the one I would recommend the most. All right, y'all. So we are talking about what are we, what are we talking about? Ah, that's what we're talking about. How to get sponsors. This is Bring Your Worst Show. It's Bring Your Worth TV coming to you live on Wednesdays. The schedule is in flux, but you can catch me on Wednesdays live on this platform, LinkedIn. Um, where else am I? Amazon. <laughs> I know some of y'all post this on, on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I'm sorry, Meta, whatever you guys call it. I'm not, I haven't been on them there for a couple of years, but I know some of y'all watch it because some of y'all share the link, which I appreciate. Thank you for the love. All other platforms that I'm actually not on that you guys are giving me wonderful shine on. I appreciate it. Thank you for the love. All right. If you guys have any questions, throw some in there. All right. The next question, how do I find sponsors? You're like, Damon, like, okay. You know, I need the passive income or I need the active income. I need to get get the thing going. So what's, what's happening? What am I doing? With sponsorship, it's pretty much like any other thing. If you've, um, I've done two startups, I sold my last startup. So if you're familiar with like the startup world, then you've heard of cold intros, warm intros, those things. If you're familiar with like investments, stuff like that, you heard of this thing. If you worked in sales, you know, these things, it's not any different. It's not any different. There's three ways I found that you can connect with with sponsors. The first one is the cold. When about a year ago, I went from about a thousand subscribers or a thousand of y'all subscribing to within a month, I had about 11,000 of y'all subscribing. So within a month, I had got about 10,000 more of y'all, <laughs> not to mention views, but 10,000 more of y'all subscribing, which was amazing. Again, I still get emotional about it because I've been like making the, sh the show for two years and it was very, very modest, even though I'm, I was glad I was contributing. And then suddenly it opened it up to the world. Shortly after that happened, I started getting these cold emails and it was like, oh, you, you have five figures worth of subscribers. What about this product? What about this service? Have you thought about adding this to your show? It was a vibe. I'm sharing this because I want to kind of pull behind the curtain and be like, if you haven't been in that position, if you create, chances are if you keep creating, you're going to be in some type of position similar to what I dealt with. And it might be on a smaller scale, might be in a gigantic scale, but all of us as creators in some form are dealing with this. What you have to kind of look at is say, these cold emails are super flattering. Cold means that you have no connection. You have no idea who they are, what the organization is. You might be familiar with the brand, but it's not like they were on your radar like that. 
It wasn't like, oh, I want them to sponsor my my program or my posts. They weren't, you weren't thinking about them. That's what cold means. Cold also means the reverse, where it's like, oh, you know what? That that particular product, I love that product. I drink a lot of kombucha, as my family can attest to. <laughs> like, like I got like, you know, a whole whole fridge rack, you know, of kombucha. Like I'm not not lying at all. <laughs> right. I'm actually gonna buy some more kombucha later on today. So I might be, it might be my favorite kombucha company. I might be like, you know what? I think they would rock with the Bring Your Worth TV audience. I think it's some folks they want to access. I'm going to drop them an email, whatever, whatever. That's cold. There's no previous connection. So that's one of them. The second one is warm. Warm is you guys are already a little bit familiar with their, with them. Not her. I don't know what that means. With, with them and or which is often where it's used, someone else will connect you to them. So it's like, let's use a kombucha example. It's like, hey, Damon, um, Bring Worth TV. I'm so glad it's going well. We'll have to catch up and have a drink sometime. Listen, I want to connect you to this kombucha company. They are killing it. They're side hustlers and they're stay-at-home parents just like you. And I know your journey. Let me connect you to, because I think, I think there might be a nice synergy there. Maybe you guys can figure something out. That's a warm intro. So either you, someone already being kind of in your circle, like you see them at a conference or something like that, you know, or, you know, you end up coming through and, and, and it's someone that you know is connecting you to, right? So that would be the second one. The third one is, I guess you call it a hot intro where y'all already know each other. And so I know a lot of folks that are building their businesses that are doing their startups and all that. And I've already been in their ear where I'm like, Hey, the show is growing. I already know and love your product. When you're ready to do a sponsorship thing, or we can do a bartering or whatever, you let me know. Like, but already having those conversations because they're already in your circle. So it's the cold one where someone just sends you an email or reaches out to you and you don't know who they are about their brand, but they want to work with you vice versa where it's a brand that you wouldn't really want to work with and you end up sending them a message and you want to talk with them. That's cold. There's a warm where you either introduce by a mutual party, like it might be a good friend of yours who actually knows them, they end up connecting you to, and or you guys are sort of in the same circle and you're more like acquaintances, so you're kind of familiar with the product. And of course, there's the hot intro, hot connection where you guys are already in the same circle and you're just prompting or they're just prompting the idea of doing a sponsorship. Obviously, the closer you get to hot, <laughs> the easier it's going to be. Because some of those folks that were reaching out to me when, you know, when I had the big subscriber growth a year ago, it, it kind of fit. But I was like, eh, okay, I'll look at the material, but I don't know if that's quite quite right for the audience. And vice versa, to be honest, where it was somewhere I was like, oh, you guys are great for my audience. And they're like, eh, you know, and then I'm not working out. And they're like, yeah, that's okay. It's like, all right. You know, and so the closer you can get to that warm, that heat, that that hot intro. <laughs> I'm killing it with the words today. The closer you can get to the hot intro, the better. Right. And I think it kind of that kind of helps the vibe with that. All right. So if we want some resources to help you with this, again, shout out to Caitlin again, because I actually learned about this through her. It's called Passion Fruit. Let me go ahead and, and pull this bad boy up. What passion fruit is, let me go and get it good. Get it good. <laughs> oh, man. Let me share the screen. Yes, please. All right. You guys see that? All right. Let me know if you guys see any issues with that. Passion fruit, double O, really important. Otherwise, you, you end up getting the old Drake song or you end up getting a bunch of fruits and vegetables. It's passion, F-R-O-O-T dot me. Where creators do brand deals. Oh, man, I'm really enjoying this so much. It's a lot of fun. One of the things that I like about the passion fruit setup is that it allows you to um, it allows you to um, to connect with with audiences or with. Let me reverse that. <laughs> As Willy Wonka said, flip it and reverse it. It allows you to connect with brands in such an easy way and not just 
from the affiliate standpoint, but actual sponsorship deals. What I'm going to do is go ahead and pull up my own right here. Just give me a moment here. So I can feel the the rust starting to come off of my uh, <laughs> off of my off of my YouTube time. Uh, give me one moment. But passion fruit is super cool, and uh, there you go. because it gives you the opportunity to not just again do the affiliate deals, but to do the um, but to actually do the sponsorship deals. So this is kind of like a deeper level, and in a sense, passion fruit. This is how it ties in. Passion fruit becomes the company or the the thing that's giving you the warm introduction. So I'll just show you mine. I realize that's the best way to do it. You guys see that? There we go. All right. Yes, we use cookies. Got you. All right. <laughs> so this is my passion fruit store. I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, throw the link in here. Sponsorship opportunities. I have a meta moment. No Mark Zuckerberg. All right. So I, oh. Sorry about the gap there, but you guys, you guys see, see what's happening. This is my passion fruit storefront. They call it a storefront. I don't like that term, but you know, we'll rock with what they're calling it. So I set this up. It took me maybe an hour and it has my picture, has my mug on there, has my various links. Of course, if you want to get really meta about it, that's the link to the YouTube channel that you're watching right now. My TikTok, my newsletter, joindamon.me, and of course my LinkedIn. Shout out to the LinkedIn family. I hope you guys are doing well. Breaks it down. I'm Damon. I help side hustlers, solopreneurs, other non-traditional entrepreneurs like yourself bloom. As a best-selling author, two-time startup founder, and four-time TED Talker, I co-founded the popular connection app Cuddler and led it to acquisition within a year while being a stay-at-home dad with my infant son. That infant son is about to turn 11. So that tells you <laughs> how long this journey has been. But that's my bio. And it breaks down super simple. And then there's two opportunities. There's Bring Your Worth TV, which you're watching right now. And I go ahead and, you know, same bio. And I have my stats, which I don't mind showing my stats. So there's the vibe. So there's more than 18,000 of y'all, but I want to have a nice flat number. 18,000 subscribers, 120,000 um impressions over the last uh, month or so. Again, I had slowed down on the video, so that's why it's a little bit lower. It's usually quite a bit higher. The amount of views, the average video duration, the top countries, US, which is where I'm based, shout out to Vegas here, the UK, we're just in England, shout out to, to the London folks, Canada, shout out to Vancouver, and my folks that are traveling right now, and Australia. And there's different ways to work together. You can do a shout out, which I was just talking about earlier, 30 second shout out without a video, there's a dedicated video where the whole video is about a particular product or service or shout out times three, which ends up being the package and the newsletter. And this is a breakdown for my newsletter. Every Wednesday, the amount of subscribers, the open rate, the biggest um, areas, which is US, UK and Canada, click through rate, clicks per, per campaign. And if you want to do a sponsored new newsletter or if you do three sponsored newsletters and then you want to collaborate with me, get in touch, you press the button, that's it. I ended up joining Passion Fruit. Again, shout out to Caitlin. I learned about it from her about two weeks ago. I joined, I think that day. <laughs> I'm pretty intense where I was like, oh no, this direction. I joined that day and I've already gotten a couple of requests. Probably going to be working with some of y'all. Some of y'all might be watching right now. You already dropped me a line. I didn't even, have, like, this is the first time I'm saying, hey, I have a Passion Fruit account come through. This is the first time I'm announcing it. Folks are already coming through. What this does is it allows you to have a particular type of energy or have a particular type of vibe. And then for brands, for companies, for organizations to say, oh, yeah, I want to work with Damon. Traditionally, with sponsorships, at least Passion Fruit is relatively new. I want to say over the past year. Traditionally, with these types of setups, like, and I can just go back to, again, when I saw the tremendous show growth a year ago. It was just emailing back and forth and setting up calendar appointments. Shout out to Calendly, you know, but setting up calendar appointments and just it was like meetings, you know what I'm saying? And emails and threads of emails and back and forth. It's like, well, if we price it this way, this, uh, uh. and it's just like, why don't we just simplify it? This is the platform. And for a lot of the brands and there's looks like it's a few hundred 
they're actually looking for sponsorships or places to sponsor for those brands some of them already say okay this is what our budget is if you want to rock with it come through so it's a level of transparency that we're able to do um i actually don't have my prices on there because i like to negotiate each one <laughs> even though i'm just complaining about it but i like to negotiate each one because it's based on budget and audience and all that stuff and you know if a major car company wants to sponsor bring your worth it's not going to be the same as you know if you have a startup and you want to sponsor bring your worth like it's not to me the flat fee doesn't make much sense but for other folks it makes sense to put the rate up there and all that stuff so go and set it up I actually have a link affiliate <laughs> but as you can see as you can see i'm a user so it's like um you know i'm i'm not only a client but i'm the i'm the club president you know when it comes to that so i'm actually am am using pasture fruit i'm excited about it and uh if you want to go ahead and check it out that's my link right there i think there's some type of bonus that happens if you use the link i don't know but you know go and check it out see what's happening on that note one of my favorite 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 episodes of the past year is actually a three chapter episode i want to say it's about 20 minutes long worth your time why you aren't charging enough um, as I said, I'm a, I'm a business coach, particularly, again, the side hustlers, solopreneurs, and other non-traditional entrepreneurs. And what I found is that we're hesitant to actually charge what we're worth. Now, for instance, for Bring Your Worth TV, this is this is free to you. If you're paying for it, please tell me because somebody, somebody's robbing you. So this is free to you, right? But my books aren't free. And if we want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you go to DaveBrown.net, that's definitely not free. I do some pro bono work and, you know, I work with some nonprofits and everything, but that's separate, you know, than my business business and how I'm able to you know, actually afford to have, have these clothes on and, and feed by growing family, growing as far as height, right? If you're going to be in the game, paraphrasing Seth Godin, if you're going to be in the game, you need to charge enough to actually stay in the game. If you end up going for the lowest common denominator, not as far as who you serve, but how much you charge, chances are you're going to be at a race to the bottom. If I had a big, you know, billboard on the, I'm about 15 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. And if I had a big billboard in Las Vegas Strip, you know, al along with the lawyers, if, you, <laughs> if you've been to Las Vegas, you know what I'm talking about. Next to like the lawyer signs and all that stuff, as well as the gambling signs. And I said, hey, Damon Brown, local i don't know why i did that local and i'm the cheapest business coach in town come see me i might have people come into my office unexpected i might start getting phone calls. i know i start getting phone calls dms on the social media platforms and all that but would i be able to make a living probably not because it doesn't make any sense and that's the road to burnout this matches with this whole discussion because sometimes we have a level of guilt or confusing or you know i'm not the biggest fan of capitalism so you know it's like we feel you know it's like oh my gosh i don't want to i don't want to make money on the community that i'm building which i respect if you sharing a particular product or service or showing up fully for that community is your intention then you need to find a way to make sure that you can make a living I wouldn't be able to help you if I was broke. I just couldn't. I couldn't. Like, it, like quite literally, I'd be trying to, you know, get unemployment um, or you know, scrape up food for my family. Like, it, there's nothing. I, I've 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 been the broke artist. There's nothing romantic about it. No shame if you are a broke artist. It might just be the phase you're in. I've had a few of those phases. I actually, talk about it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to advertise it. I swear. But if, particularly in the Bring Your Worth book, the original one which I think is over here, but it's in, in the complete bring your worth in this book. I talk about that period of time I was in and it wasn't super long ago. So, you know, no shame in that, but you don't have to stay there. Your authenticity isn't measured by how broke you are or how hard you have to work as an artist. It's not measured by that. It's measured. I would argue by how much of an impact you make. And so you can make a good living, even a great living, and also still be contributing to your community. In fact, I would argue, I wasn't able to do this kind of show 
until recent years because my money wasn't at that level where I could spend an hour or two with y'all and then several hours behind the scenes curating the show and just do it for free. Sponsorships are coming in, but you know, this has come from a place of love, but that love can only be expressed because I was able to pay my bills. Big discussion. As you can tell, I'm going a big rant on it. <laughs> Some of y'all that have coached with me, we've had this conversation. It's so important as creators, we get out of that mentality that we have to be broke. We actually don't. And in fact, in some ways, by us finding a way to make a decent living, we're able to contribute more. These 371 episodes didn't just magically happen. I actually had the financial and the mental space, even the emotional space to contribute to y'all. Why you aren't charged enough, please watch that one. Really important. On that heavy note, <laughs> you're watching Bring Your Worth TV every Wednesday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Playing with the schedule. We'll see what happens. Right now, Wednesday's lives is the vibe. Entrepreneurial coach to side hustle solopreneurs, otherwise non traditional entrepreneurs. You can subscribe for free and you can get the complete Bring Your Worth collection wherever books are sold, including damebrown.net or you can listen right now to the entire series i want to say it's about eight hours long yeah good value here please take advantage of it and if you enjoy it throw a comment you know on the on the video that it's on today we're talking about how to get sponsors the lines are open feel free to jump in and give your questions the last schedule question which i've been waiting for how do i pr price sponsors if i can talk today how do, I, how do I price sponsors? This one is tough because it's kind of like being an independent freelance writer or being an um, independent photographer. Shout out to photographers out there. Shout out to Alex Goats and you know my folks that have hooked me up in the past. A lot of these beautiful pictures that you see, at least the pictures that I love of myself, <laughs> which doesn't always happen, they're done by amazing photographers who are often independent. So shout out to them. And you know what do you charge for that? What do you charge for, for changing, changing someone's view of themselves or for making an impact or, you know, in this case, for allowing someone access to your beautiful, hard-earned community? It's a tough question. I think it comes down personally to three different things. The number one thing is the size of your audience. Again, for me, the messages, the cold emails and DMs, they started to come as soon as I hit five figures worth of subscribers. And suddenly, I swear, it was like night and day. It kind of freaked me out a little bit as you dump on my face. It was just over a year ago, and it's still, I still have the emotional, like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I, I think I was already on episode 250. <laughs> and it's like, what is this 250 episodes? And now? And so the size of the audience, in some cases, does matter. The second element of it is the niche of the audience, which in some cases ends up being the opposite. If you are say, I'm I always pick on plumbers, shout out to the plumbers. You guys have helped me out so much in the past. If you're like, my newsletter is for, is for um, family owned plumber businesses in Southwest Louisiana, shout out to Nola and other folks down there. It's in Southwest Louisiana. Actually, I, I got some friends and some folks that have lived down there. So really shout out to them, Baton Rouge and all that. That's what my newsletter is focused on. It sounds like you might have, I don't know, a thousand subscribers, maybe. You saw, you know, you saw my modest newsletter account when I showed you. You might have a thousand subscribers if you're booming like that, you know, you know, or you might have a hundred. But if it's a dedicated audience that really, really cares about this particular niche, family-owned plumbing businesses in Southwest Louisiana, and you got a new product, let's say you're the company. And you know, and or want to be want to be sponsored, and you have a new product, and that product is going to, in your mind, revolutionize how small businesses can handle their plumbing. How much are you willing to pay for that niche audience? So the numbers matter as far as scale, but then so does the niche. I'm lucky in that I have the intersection of both. A lot of y'all that are rocking with me right now are interested in or are currently side hustlers, solopreneurs, or the non-traditional entrepreneurs. Y'all have been rocking with me for those 250 episodes before I went to five digits worth of subscribers. And so with that energy, 
then ideally it's both. The third part of it, size of audience, the niche of the audience, and third, their desired impact. This is where the pricing starts to get more into it. And there's some links I'm going to give you, great resources. So in the next five minutes, we're going to be wrapping up and I'll send you, I'll send you, send you in the comments. I'm not going to send you anything. In the comments, I'll go and give you these links as far as there being essentially two ways that people can measure, companies can measure the impact of your particular sponsorship. One is the eyeballs or exposure or click through when it's shown to somebody. So if you are on a social media platform, you have a sponsorship, they might be like, okay, we're going to go ahead and pay you X amount of dollars, but we're going to expect you to have 10,000 or more impressions. Impressions means views, like literally you're seeing it or 10,000 clicks, right? So it's called a click-through rate, 10,000 clicks. And then anything beyond, above that, we're excited. And then the next time we do a sponsorship, we'll pay you more. That's kind of the vibe. That's one way to do it as far as um, exposure slash click through. The other way to do it is to say, we're actually going to pay you based on how many people buy this product or this service, right? This is different than referral where you might get a little piece of it. It's more like, we're going to give you the bag. We're going to give you this money. We're going to expect 5,000 people to buy this product through your particular link. That's different than referral. <laughs> referral is basically saying, however many people buy it, you'll get a piece of it. This one is saying, no, we're going to give you the money up front based on the expectation that you're going to have 5,000 people buy this joint based on whatever you're sharing with them. And again, back to what I said in the beginning, how close it fits your particular audience. So that's why you have to be thoughtful as far as who you have sponsored what. You got to be careful with that because if you don't have it right, then it's going to be like, well, you took our money, but we're not having any results. That's an uncomfortable place to be. I've been on the edge of those kind of things. Usually it hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it with other, and it's not, because then you can't go back to the brand and it's like, oh, well, you know, let's work together again. And they're like, well, you know, 10 people, 10 people bought it and we expected 10,000. So, you know, what are we doing? You know what I mean? And so, <laughs> and so that's kind of the vibe with that. And so those are the three different ways as far as like your size of your audience, the niche of your audience, their desired impact, and then the sponsorship money is usually based on the impression slash click click throughs or the amount of product that's sold. Personally, I think the amount of product that's sold can be way more dangerous. And someone talked about this in the resources I'm about to give you because the product could just not be executed well, or it might have a shipping problem as we dealt with the pandemic over the last four years. Shipping problems are a real thing. I got stuff that's just coming to me that was supposed to be here months ago. I swear, I was just on the phone with somebody earlier this week. <clears throat> so that so that might that might hurt the sales. They might have, and one of the experts talked about this in the video I'm about to share with you. They might have aw awful customer service. Their website might not be working well, and so when people try to buy something, the cart doesn't work. Maybe they're having um, what's it called? Um, I forget what it's called, but when um. Fulfillment, if they're having fulfillment issues where people are putting their credit card, and it's not work. Like there's infinite things. Some of y'all run businesses. There's infinite things that can happen that you have no control over because you have a sponsorship de deal with them, but it's not your company. That's why it's really important to go in and think about what kind of deal you want to have for folks. All right. So if you want to go deeper into this, a good place to start is Beehive. This is my affiliate link. Wink, wink. You go back to the top of the show for me to talk about affiliates. Beehive is great because it allows you to easily, and I and I don't say easy that often, easily send newsletters. It's almost like working in a Word doc to add images, text, and more importantly, to have sponsors. Let's talk about it. I'm going to go ahead and show you my, my join over here. And I'm going to show you the, um, the Beehive screen because it's pretty basic but I will show you my newsletter. There we go. So this is the Damon Brown's Bring Your Worth newsletter. <laughs> Subscribe for free right there. Written by Damon Brown's Bring Your Worth, et cetera, et cetera. This is the archive eight hours ago. So this is the one that just came through. This is one I was talking about as far as self-regulation. So you can go through on that. And you could see, you know, it's probably like a dozen plus 
you know, some of my favorite newsletters have come out over the past few months. So I'm very, very proud and very excited, particularly with the feedback that I've gotten from y'all. It just feels like a different vibe happening. What Beehive allows you to do, I'll go ahead and show you right here, is it allows you to get sponsorship from different, different um, setups here. So it's like, this is a sponsorship right here. There's an email newsletter course where you can go ahead and set up a course via email newsletter and actually charge people for it. It's almost like I used to have a teachable uh, setup back in the day or Udemy, if you're familiar with them, even with like shout out to LinkedIn, with LinkedIn Learning, similar to that, except it's all a newsletter setup. This course will help you with that. That fits y'all because a lot of y'all ask, hey, should I set up a course? Or I have this knowledge, I don't know how to sell it, blah, 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 or I don't know how to get it to my audience. It's like, great, one of my partners will do that for you. And then as y'all click on that, whoever's reading it clicks on that, then I actually don't get paid by whoever, by however many it's sold, but I actually get paid by how many people click on it. So the impressions matter, but then how many click on it matters too. Now, the key thing with, with Beehive, and let me see if I can go to the B, let me see it here. There we go. You guys see that? All right, beautiful. And so with Beehive, what works here is that, um, as you can tell, they work with a lot of different, different platforms. And if you end up, there's a 30 day trial, which you can go ahead and click on the link that I have right there to check it out. It's just below y'all. You can go and see what's happening. If you go with their, I think it's called the scale plan. If you go with the scale plan, and again, it's free for 30 days. If you click on there, try it out with the scale plan, then you actually, similar to Passion Fruit, you have people coming in and saying, hey, your newsletter is for side hustlers, solopreneurs, other non traditional entrepreneurs. I, I want to get in front of that audience. This is how much our budget is. We'll pay you this much per click. Suddenly, that newsletter that I've had for 15, probably 20 years, and I've been doing consistently for the past decade or so. Again, when my first son was born, he's about to turn 11. So I started the newsletter earnestly at that time. Suddenly, I'm actually able to bring in revenue and not indirect revenue as far as coaching and all those other things, but like, no, literally, like I'm getting checks every week from me sending out the newsletter. Again, shout out to Caitlin because she had a, she gave me some game as far as with Beehive, and that's how I ended up learning about it. This is a great opportunity to do so. You should go and check it out. The link is right there. See what's happening. And let me close that up. There we go. Yeah, keep an eye on technical difficulties since I've I've been been out of the game for a little while. All right, but you're not going to get sponsored anything if you don't have an audience. There's a great foundational video is actually kind of like a best of. So it's a handful of chapters to it. But I think the whole thing is maybe like an hour long, worth your time, how to grow an audience when you have or if you have none. We all kind of have an audience in our own way. We just haven't necessarily gathered them. We don't recognize that they're an actual audience. This will help you get that insight. And frankly, you're going to have a hard time getting sponsorships or even making money from the affiliates, which are more the, the links that people click on and you can make money on it. That's a little bit different or difficult to do, I should say, when you don't have your audience organized. I have the newsletter with y'all. I'm connected with a lot of y'all on LinkedIn and the work I do on there. And of course I have the show with bringyourworth.tv. So it's organized in a certain way where I'm like, hey, if you wanna connect with my audience, they're at one of these three places. Did you want to connect with them? Cool. It makes it a lot e or easier to organize and to share with other people too. Again, the newsletter, which I just showed you, joindamon.me. It is free. Check it out every Wednesday, 5.55 a.m. You see what's happening. This stuff is really good. And we will end on these two notes. Shout out to Thought Leaders. I think it's thoughtleaders.io. Yeah, right there on the link. <laughs> like, why don't I read it? <laughs> Tips on pricing. If you want to go deeper to the pricing, there's a lot of resources here, including a calculator, which sometimes gets it right, but at least it gives you some type of range as far as what you could charge based on the size of your audience, the platform you have. And of course, like I was talking about how deep the niche goes. This had, when I was going through, I was going through a year ago and suddenly I was getting all these cold emails. I was like, oh my God, 
this is one of the resources where I kept going back to it. And I made some mistakes along the way. <laughs> I would have handled certain things differently. But a lot of those mistakes I was able to avoid because this particular article, as well as shout out to Fee, Fee Wu. Hope you're doing well. She has this great video. Um, I think it came out about a year and a half, two years ago, but I discovered it about a year ago again, when I was going through this, breaking down how sponsorship works. She actually talks with, um, with I think it's the head of partnerships. I think that's her title. Anya, who's over at Restream. Restream is a competitor to StreamYard. I'm on StreamYard right, right now. I've been on both of y'all. I love both of y'all. Talk to both of y'all. I love both of y'all's work. But Restream is very similar to StreamYard, which is on, um, I'm on right now. And um, they have, has, have this two-part, I think it's hour and a half long conversation. There's so many gems in here. I had reached out, I'm sorry, the reverse. Some brands had reached out to me. I had responded to them. I'll put it like this. We're, we're going to have an honest moment for a second. Oh, that's a, actually, you know what? We have a great question here. Someone's asking, how should someone start? And unfortunately, it's on Amazon. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in there. Their name is Z. Shout out to Z. How should someone start with sponsorship? Doing it live. <laughs> if I correctly. And you wouldn't think I had two degrees of journalism. If you <laughs> are new to creating. Man. You from Amazon. All right, Z, you are on the air. Not literally, but you know, I got your comment. Thank you, Z. I appreciate the comment. I can't do it on both platforms. Amazon, please fix that. But I put it in there for you. How should someone start with sponsorship if you are new to creating? Frankly, I would recommend you start with just the creating and start with just building that. Build up your catalog. There's a, a great rule. That I learned from the podcasters. Shout out to um, um, Megan Francis. Um, shout out to uh, to Carlos, who was just his comment was just on there. Shout out to you. There's so many folks that have been in the game longer than me as far as the regular content. Again, this show is only three and a half years old. I'm old, but the show is new. One solid rule is to not announce your platform, your new creative endeavor, until you're at least three episodes in. It's like me launching BringYourWorth.tv and saying, hey, there's a new show, come watch it. And they watch, I think my first episode of Bring Your Worth TV was like eight minutes long. They watch eight minutes, and they're like, great, that was great, Damon. And it's like, all right. And they just kind of sit there. And then hopefully I have another episode. A lot of us quit after the first episode, but then hopefully I have another episode and they wait a week later, whatever, and then they and they come back. It's similar with sponsorships I've found is that you actually want to build what I would call your catalog. Build your, build your catalog, build your library because there's two reasons for that. Number one is a reason I just talked about. You actually want to have some type of reason for people to stay. You want some type of reason for people to stay. If it's just one off episode, it's not going to, okay, I watched the episode. Even if it's a long episode like this, like I just approached an hour. Even if it's this, if I didn't have anything else for you guys to watch, you'd be like, oh, that was great. And then you guys are going to wander off, right? And so you want to have that. Same thing with the sponsors. The second part of it, which is kind of unique to sponsors, I would say, but but to a lesser extent with, with your, your, um, your, um, your audience or your community, is that they want to see how you're going to continue to show up. So I'm, again, 371. This is episode 371. So if I'm talking with a sponsor, they know I'm not going anywhere. 371 episodes in three years. And I got friends and colleagues that have done triple. I know one person, I think her name is Louise. Shout out to Louise. I know her through LinkedIn, who's done a video every single day since the pandemic began four years ago. No lie. That, if she wanted sponsorship, whatever, they're like, no, she's going to show up. Now I'm changing my schedule now, like I talked about. Now I'm doing live on Wednesdays to get a good feel as far as this next chapter. It's almost like a new season for the show. But they know I'm going to show up. And they know I'm going to show up regularly. 
and they know that 18,000 of y'all are rocking with me. So number one, you want to have your catalog together. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just build up that catalog a little bit. And there might even be parts of it where you think you want to create in a certain way. You look at some of my earlier episodes, wasn't what I was, I'm doing now, <laughs> right? I was watching some of my old episodes the other night. I was like, ooh, I was doing it different three, four years ago. And so giving yourself time to create and your audience to come in and for them to actually enjoy your content. Again, more than three episodes or more. But then the second thing is that you have to let your catalog build a little bit. Otherwise, the sponsors don't know what they're buying. And they don't know if you're going to be consistent in that way. There's so many of us as creators, again, yep. And yep, thank you, Z. I just got your message. Thank you, Z. I'm glad it was helpful for you. There's so many of us that that get that create or that want to create zero judgment. I got so much stuff on the cutting room floor that I want to that I wanted to it to thrive and I wanted to do it on a regular basis and it just didn't work. If you end up doing getting sponsorship, even even if like the curse, and I'm glad I didn't go through this. The curse is when you have a new idea, you barely start creating it, and then you start getting money thrown at you. That is a curse because then there's all that baggage with money. And I talk about that in the You're Not Charging Enough episode, which is in the links below. But there's also the baggage as far as you having an obligation while you're still working on your craft. And so it was really just to go full circle. When I started getting the cold emails and DMs a year ago, all these folks I wanted to work with, Bring Your Worth TV, when I went from 1,000 subscribers to 10,000 plus, the blessing was that I already had 250 episodes in the can. Z, you don't have to do that. But I already had 250 episodes in the can, as they call it, in journalism and in, in media. I had 250 episodes in the can. And I already established my voice, again, as we say in media, I already established my voice. Like how I'm talking to y'all right now, that was wobbly for the first 100 episodes. Now I feel like myself on camera. If you meet me in person, I'm this, I'm pretty much the exact same way. So that vibe, it took 100 episodes and then really perfected it after 250 episodes. So when the sponsors started coming through, like, again, I have sponsors for the newsletter. I'm talking to folks about sponsoring the show. Once they started coming through, then I was able to have a conversation with them about all this other stuff, but I wasn't worried about the authenticity of how I was showing up. That's my biggest thing, Z, is to just get it started. Don't worry about the sponsorship. Don't worry about, don't worry about it. Just build up that catalog. Find out who your audience is and sharpen it if you already know what it is and find out what that voice is and whatever you're creating. And then I think naturally, then you'll start to have an idea as far as when to start calling the sponsors, or it'll be like in my case where, you know, suddenly you hit a tipping point and then the sponsors are coming to you. So hopefully that, that helps a lot. And thank you for, thank you for the thought provoking question. Fei Wu, fantastic video. Be sure and check it out. This is worth your time. This as well as thought leaders video, or I'm sorry, thought leaders um, post right there. This is fantastic. You know, oh, and Z, you said I should I should share this on LinkedIn. I already am. I already am. Shout out to my LinkedIn community. And I'll be sure and get to your comments because every platform is different. So I don't see all the LinkedIn comments. But if you have any other comments, be sure and um, I'll be sure and reply to them after this video is done. One last thing, too. Unfortunately, Amazon does not have this. But for all the platforms that you're watching on, I put a link or a comment, essentially, with all the links right below the video. So if anything that you missed or anything you're questioning or whatever, it's right below there. It's embedded in this video, but it's also, I believe, the first pinned comment for a lot of this. Whew. I haven't done an hour-long live in a long time. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for all the engagement. Thank you, Z. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, all of y'all, for coming through. It's wonderful to be back and bring back this energy. Again, today we're talking about how to get sponsors, live Q&A. Watch the replay. There's a lot of gems in there, if I should say so myself, and especially from the commentary from y'all, it allowed us to explore things in different ways. Again, my name is Damon Brown. I'm an entrepreneurial coach to side hustlers, solopreneurs, otherwise non-traditional entrepreneurs. Happy to coach with you. Just check me out at damonbrown.net. Bring Your Worth TV, 370 episodes. Pick one. But we're also live 
every Wednesday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Las Vegas time. You subscribe for free. And the new book is the complete Bring Your Worth collection. Appreciate y'all. And thank you for the compliments over at uh, Desteris. I appreciate you over on Amazon. Thank you for all the love. It's good to be back. And if you want to go ahead and buy the book, you can click it at any of the links below. You can also listen to it right now. Beautiful thing about owning your own publishing company. I can do what I want. <laughs> so I want to share the book with y'all in audiobook form. It's available on all the audiobook platforms. But if you want to listen right now, you also want to support the show, watch it at that link below. Much love to y'all. And uh, I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Remember, you can always bring your worth. You can always build from now. Take care of yourselves.